This is Luke Covey, editorial director of New Tech Press, and I'm here at the Qualcomm Atheros booth with Tim Colloran, director of product management for Qualcomm, and he's going to be showing me some of the things that they're going to be doing. They're doing uh, for uh, uh, low energy, low resource Wi-Fi system and package for uh, the smart grid, and we're going to be talking about the smart grid and a few other things. Okay, so Tim, uh, what is this that you're going to be showing us here? Well, I'm going to talk today about the 4100P. It's a, a new system and package we've just released uh, this week. It's a low energy, low resource Wi-Fi device for the machine to machine space, uh, embedded space. It's generally for lower, lower data rate applications, uh, in a two to five megabit range. Uh, it can run off batteries as, as shown here in uh, uh, a module that's been done by one of our partners, uh, RTX Telecom. Okay, where would that be put into? And this, this particular one is demonstrating a sensor. So this sensor, this board has a temperature sensor on it, wakes up every hour and actually tweets the temperature out. So Over Twitter? Yeah, it uses Twitter and okay. sends it out. And I can actually show you that link after this. So that's, that's an example of a remote sensing device using battery-operated Wi-Fi okay. and very easy to use leverage things already out there in the cloud to go ahead and, and access that technology. Um, this, this particular one is another sensor-based demo and it actually has a temperature sensor on it. It Let's also has a, off sorry, the light. There we a, go. Uh, that, a motion sensor in it and a we've got light, motion, and temperature. Okay. And this is a little development board that we've put together. The demo on top of it has been done by an authorized design center, Card Access. Okay. And it has a whole uh, web-based infrastructure behind it. So we go from Twitter, very low maintenance, easy to use interface. This one has a whole uh, web-based infrastructure so you can go up, look at the temperature, record the data over time, and have it in a, a very easy to use and dissect format. And in fact, I think Ed has it on the screen over here. Um, <laughs> And uh, if I actually, while you're doing that, I'll put the oh, here we go. I'll put the light on the light sensor. Okay. And uh, we should see that light sensor number. There we go. Pop up to 100. Um, and then okay. again off. Uh, to go back down to, to ambient light. Okay. Uh, similarly, this unit uh, doesn't tweet, but it can email. So as this box gets moved around, uh, it will detect the motion and go ahead and send me an email. It's just a whole different view for Wi-Fi, where we're starting to see a deployment of battery-operated Wi-Fi in sensor devices. Okay. Uh, the 4100P device that we're talking about uh, has a complete Wi-Fi offload. Mm -hmm. So the all the security, WPA, WEP, WPA2, um, and WPS as well. It also has an IP stack offload, IPv4, IPv6 staff, stack offload. So all of that comes off the microcontroller and down onto our system and package. So at the end of the day, you can you can end up putting more things on your microcontroller or using a smaller, less expensive microcontroller. Excellent. So ease of use, small resource systems, and low energy, and that's really what it's all about. Okay, so what are we looking at here? So what we have here is we're showing the, the connectivity solutions for uh, smart energy uh, solutions uh, that would be available out in the market here. Okay. Uh, so Qualcomm, of course, and Qualcomm Atheros are, are big on connectivity. Uh, we have cellular solutions. Uh, we have our 3G chipset inside this Digi router here. Uh, we have power line solutions. This is the new home plug Green 5. And then we have, of course, our uh, Wi-Fi solutions. And we're targeting uh, to show here our new uh, AR4100 low energy Wi-Fi device for uh, smart grid and, and sensor type networks. So let me run you through the, the, the diagram here of the okay. system. So uh, we have the utility head end here. This is uh, representative of PG&E or, or uh, Florida Power and Light. It's talking out over the internet um, to your meter over a cellular connection. Once we're on uh, in the meter, then we go over the power line with the home plug uh, power line technology to talk to the, our home energy gateway. Uh, from the home energy gateway, we're connected up over Wi-Fi to the end devices, which we have a thermostat and an iPad here in this uh, demonstration. Okay. 
So uh, let me go ahead and set up the, the demo for you. So uh, as you can see over here, uh, we'll start uh, on the iPad and uh, the, the, the thermostat here. It's a, it's a hot day outside. We have our thermostat cranking at 68 degrees, 100% duty cycle, consuming a lot of energy. So the utilities see a, a large demand on their system and they want to reduce that demand. Um, and what we're gonna do is come back over to this utility head end system and we're going to send a Smart Energy 2.0 uh, demand response event down to our home energy gateway okay. over the cellular network. All right. So we sent that down. It is now being written onto the gateway. And then the end devices, being the, the thermostat and, and the display, will pull the gateway from Wi-Fi bridged over to power line to the gateway, and they'll adjust their um, they'll adjust their load accordingly. Okay. So as you can see, it's now uh, 72 degrees. We're consuming a lot less current. The duty cycle uh, is switched off basically, and uh, there's a lot less drain on the utility's power. Um, so that would be the demand response. After a certain amount of time, uh, the utility would then end the demand response, thus setting. Uh, the temperature back to the, the, the consumer's uh, 68 degrees.